Hi, and welcome to Viewmaster Travels, where we visit locations from old Viewmaster reels and try to recreate the pictures from them. Maybe we'll learn a little bit of history along the way. Today it's reel number 219, Hollywood, California. I've got two versions of this reel, one handwritten and one typed, so there's a couple different pictures between them. So we're going to look at nine different pictures today. Hollywood's pretty much one of the most iconic and fabled tourist destinations in the U.S. It's in Southern California, northwest of Los Angeles. And historically, it's been the home of the movie and TV industry, which is still a major tourist draw today, even though most of that industry has moved away. To help with this trip, I got this handy guide map, which was from 1950. It maps all the points of interest in Hollywood and L.A. Let's take a look at the first picture. This is Hollywood Bowl. The Hollywood Bowl is a very famous outdoor amphitheater in the Hollywood Hills, so it was easy to find. We came into town from the north on Highway 101 and followed the signs right into the parking lot. The original picture was taken from the back of the seating area right up here, but we couldn't get the same view because they weren't letting people in, but we were able to wander around outside. Comparing the pictures, you can see quite a bit's been added. Where these trees were, there's now a museum. And on the other side, there's a restaurant and a lot more buildings. The Hollywood Bowl opened in 1922, so it's got a long history going back 100 years. But my favorite fact is that it was the inspiration for Pink Floyd's stage show for their Division Bell tour in the mid-90s. Next up, Griffith Observatory. This is another easy to find landmark. We left the bowl and followed Franklin to Griffith Park and then made our way up the mountain. The parking lot at the top is really small, so you have to park on the windy road leading up and hike the rest of the way, so be prepared for some walking, and it was really hot that day. But from the top, you get some great views of the Hollywood sign and the city. But to match the Viewmaster picture, we had to take this trail down the other side to see the building from the back. This view is exactly the same, except that trees have grown up in the way of the view. The observatory was opened in 1935, and it contained the third public planetarium in the U.S. It's still open to visitors today and has some great exhibits, and it's also been used in many TV and movie productions, so it's a pretty neat place to visit. The next picture is Grauman's Chinese Theater. We parked in Central Hollywood and walked down La Brea to Hollywood Boulevard to find the Chinese Theater. This one looks really similar today, except we couldn't get up high like the original picture, but ours is really close. The building today has got a lot more advertisements on it, but a bunch of the details are the same, like the metal over the entrance and the details on the walls, and these Ming Dynasty lions in front. And these people in the courtyard would be looking at some of the original signed concrete slabs that are still there today. And I always thought that these archways were where you bought tickets, which could have been true then, but now they're actually little souvenir shops. 
The theater was opened in 1927, and it still shows first-run movies today, although there's only one screen in the main building, so you have to like what they're showing if you want to watch something in there. On to the next picture, Hollywood Boulevard. Given that the Chinese theater is in this image, it's pretty clear that this was taken in the same place as the last one. However, it's from high up, so I think it must have been taken from an upper floor of the Roosevelt Hotel. Now though, you can't see this view since this big black building's in the way, which I think is a bank. So we took our picture from street level. The original is a great picture. There's a bunch of interesting details to go over in this one. First off, past the theater, you can see there used to be a parking lot, a street, and an apartment building. The parking lot is now the Dolby Theater, and this entrance is right where the street used to be. All that's left now is the pedestrian crosswalk. The buildings further down are now a shopping mall. And it's built at a weird angle, so you still have a view of the Hollywood sign. And the next building down was the Hollywood First National Bank, built in 1927. And it was the tallest building in Hollywood until 1932. The bank apparently closed soon after the 1929 stock market crash, and now it looks mostly abandoned. Across the street is the El Capitan Theater building which was from 1926 and was where Citizen Kane premiered and now shows Disney movie premieres. And you can just see the label Barker Brothers Hollywood at the top, which was a furniture store that was there until the 70s. And way, way back in the distance, you can just make out a little blur. That's the Griffith Observatory high up on the mountain. And here's the reverse view from there of the Roosevelt Hotel. Next is the Brown Derby. After looking this one up on Wikipedia, we went several blocks east to Vine and then south to about where 1628 North Vine Street would be. The original building is gone. There's only supposed to be an apartment complex there now. But when we got there, we were surprised to find this archway and facade that clearly resemble the Viewmaster picture. The roof details look the same, but the archways and windows are different. Maybe it's some kind of homage to the original Brown Derby, but we couldn't find any details and it looks kind of abandoned. The Brown Derby in Hollywood was a legendary restaurant that opened in 1929. It was the birthplace of the Cobb Salad and the Shirley Temple Drink, and a meeting place of the rich and famous, but it wasn't the original restaurant. The original Brown Derby restaurant was at 3427 Wilshire. It was a short drive away. It opened in 1926 and was famous for being shaped like a derby hat. We drove over there, and that hat structure is still there, on top of a strip mall in Koreatown. Super cool. On to Vine Street from Sunset Boulevard. Sunset and Vine are just another block down from the old Brown Derby. This used to be where NBC Studios was until it moved to Burbank and was replaced by a bank in the mid-60s. There's still some matching details, though. The Broadway Hollywood building is still there, but that sign's hidden by advertisements. And the street light is the same design, but now there's two lights instead of just one. The alternate picture to this one from the handwritten reel is NBC and CBS Broadcasting Studios.
This is the same location, but looking east. And in the far distance, you can see the Hollywood Palladium Theater and Columbia Square, which used to be CBS Studios. The next picture is Santa Claus Lane, Hollywood Boulevard. We thought this one would be really hard to place, but if you study the neon sign, you can make out Equitable. The Equitable building of Hollywood was at the famous Hollywood and Vine intersection, so we went a couple blocks back north to find it. And looking carefully, you can make out the Pantages sign, and that's a famous theater that's still there. It's one block east of Vine on Hollywood. So from about there, we matched the Christmas picture. There's a couple neat details on this one. If you look very carefully, you can make out the Taft building sign. The Taft building from 1923 used to be the offices of all the movie studios and bigwigs, and now it rents out office space. Also, you can see the old streetcar rails, public transit famously removed when the freeway system went in. Decorating Hollywood Boulevard for Christmas with a parade is an annual tradition that started in 1928 and is still going on today. Finally, the last picture is a Palm Line Street. We couldn't figure out a way to find this exact location, but we did find a popular street that's similar. This one's on South Windsor, not too far from the original Brown Derby. It's popular because of the way it lines up with the Hollywood sign in the distance. A very pretty street and a popular location for photographers. That's it for this set of nine pictures. Hollywood's a really weird tourist destination. To me, it almost seems haunted by its past. There's all kinds of ghosts from its history that you can find if you look around, and it's famous for an industry that hasn't been there for a really long time. But there's tons of clues to find that reveal this deep history. Thanks for watching. See you next time.